Are you there? Okay, I'll read verse 1. You read verse 2. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Which is not another, but, the, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you than ye have received, let him be your curse altogether. For do I now persuade man or God? Or do I seek to please man or fear I please man? I shall not be the servant of Christ. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We just want to thank you, God, for the privilege once again to study your word. And Lord, uh, I just pray uh, continue to bless thy word. Uh, put your word in the power of the, under the power of the Holy Spirit. Be the one to be glorified in our midst. Praying, God, for you to give us understanding. Bless your servant, O oh God, as I continue to teach and preach your word. Lord, without you, I cannot do anything. I pray, uh, guide me, Holy Spirit. Use me as a vessel for the feed for the master's use. Be the one to be exalted, O oh God. And I just want to thank you and leave it up all to you and trusting you that you will be the one to be uh, speak into our hearts and be the one to be uh, glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so I am going to uh, continue po sa, sa book of Galatians and uh, I pray that uh, I will be able to finish this this morning. But uh, although ilang verses lang po, actually I, we are just going to concentrate in verse 6 up to verse 10. So here, uh, uh, if you are going to study the, the book of Galatians, boy, I see something that you will see the, uh, the goodness and the, and the faithfulness of God in our lives. And if you are going to study the book of Galatians, in overview, in a view, in a view, uh, in, uh, in, in overview of this, if you are going, if I'm going to summarize the book of Galatians, you will see that uh, here that we are already justified. And we are no longer under the law. We are now under the law or the commandments of Christ. And how can we do that in our life as a believer of the Lord? So dito, ito po yung overview ng, uh, overview ng Galatians. And here, there are some problems. Actually, the problem here, uh, actually, is lang. They were, uh, they were uh, influenced by the wrong doctrine. So here, makikita po yun yun sa verse, uh, sa verse 6, starting from verse 6. But let me just give some, ano lang po, some uh, basic info from the book of Galatians. Okay po, uh, dito po makita po natin that we can see here, at, uh, oh, by the way, the title of my uh, preaching this morning is the, the Danger of False Teaching. The Danger of False Teaching. What are these? What are these that being, uh, being uh, corrected by Paul? That, that are, uh, ito po yung, ano, these are the, the thing that Paul needed to be corrected through the churches of Galatia. Yung circumcision before baptism, yung, these are being, they are being influenced by the Judaizers or what we call the circumcision party. And, and these people, they added to the word of God. And later on, we are going to see that. And also, salvation by keeping the law. So for us, as a believer, we should understand that we are not saved by under the law, we are saved by the grace of God. We are justified by faith. Okay? So here, some backgrounds lang po. Galatia, I have mentioned this before, that Galatia is not, is a region. Okay? It is a region. So if you are going to study the book of Galatia, there will be no specific word saying Church of Galatia. Kasi po, Galatia is a region. But within Galatia, there are churches or there are places or there are cities that 
where Paul pioneered a church. So these are the churches. So yun po. So uh, Galatia it was a Roman province in Asia Minor. And uh, what do you call this? Uh, Galatia is in, the, if I'm not mistaken, is in the southern part. Of, uh, this is in the southern part. So these are the churches that are in, ito po, makita niyo po dito sa, sa map, yung pong uh, Galatia. So here, in Galatia, you will see at least there are four mentioned churches that are pioneered by Apostle Paul. And these are uh, Antioch in Acts 13.14. I am not going to read this because I am not, this is not my topic. But at least you will see the background. Uh, these are the churches in Galatia. These are the cities. Number one is Antioch in Acts 13.14. Iconium in Acts 13.51. Lystra in Acts 14 verse 8 and Derby in Acts 14 19 to 21. So these are the, the churches. So at least ma, 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 that we can have the, we can understand that when we say the book of Galatians, it is not particularly the church. There's a, a, a church of Galatia. No. Galatia is a region where Paul, where, uh, where Paul ministered, where Paul uh, nag mission po siya doon and go to these churches, to these cities. Okay. Uh, here, we can see the background. I just want to say the, the background why Paul wrote Galatia. Paul is the one who pioneered these churches and there are certain wrong doctrines that arises to this, through these churches. So here, Paul can go to, to that place uh, to rebuke the Galatians and correct the wrong Doctrines. So ito po yung pangay po ni Apostle Paul. Paul is, uh, uh, went to those places to, uh, po, mamaya, you will see that the transition of Paul's word to the Galatian. And if you, if you are familiar with uh, the book of Galatians, chapter 3 is one of the famous uh, rebuke of Paul when he said to the Galatian, O oh, oh, foolish Galatian, who hath be with you? So ito po yung isa sa mga famous word na kung babasahin po natin ng book of Galatia. Yung pong wrong things, the wrong teachings here are, are, are this. For the Gentiles who wants to become Christians or, or to, for those who are already saved, they must be become Jew first. I mentioned this before. They needed to be circumcised first. Why? Because the, the Jews are being jealous to the Gentiles. They're being jealous to the Gentiles. How come that they will be saved without knowing the law and how come they will be saved without the circumcision so they are getting they are getting jealous to these people so here for them it's like it's like this before the baptism they should be uh, circumcised but let me just give you some some background first before i continue let's go in acts 15:1 in acts 15:1 verse uh, we will just read this uh, for a uh, at least po yung background lang before I continue. Acts 15, 1 until verse, if I'm not mistaken, verse, uh, ano ba nangyari? Okay, so ito na lang. <laughs> Up to 11. Okay, a certain man which came down from Judea taught the, the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. So they are saying that if you will not be circumcised, you will not be, be saved. And in verse 2, a certain man which came down, uh, verse 2, <laughs> when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispu uh, disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas, a certain other of them, should go up to Jerusalem. They need to report to Jerusalem and to, and to the apostles and the elders about this question. Verse 3, and being brought on their way by the church, they passed through uh, Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, and they caused, they caused great joy unto to all the brethren. So they passed by the church, and when they have known this, the Gentiles uh, being saved, they, they, uh, the, they, they had a great joy in them. Okay, in verse 4. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were, uh, they were received of the church and of the apostles and the elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. So here, they are testifying. 
that a lot of Gentiles are being saved. Okay, verse 5. But there rose up a, uh, a certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. They are now adding to the salvation that was shed already to them by Apostle Paul. Verse 6. And the apostle and the elders came together for, the, for to consider this matter. Pero ako dito, nagtaka po rito, ay, pwede pakibalik mo na, uh, Sir Milka. Nagtaka ako dito, sabi niya, and the apostles and the elders came together for to consider on this matter. Ba, parang ikukonsider pa nila to. Para yata hindi nila alam. Then verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know that uh, a good while ago God made a choice among us that, that the Gentiles by my, by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Verse 8. And God which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us. Paul is saying, they are also saved like us. Re we receive the Holy Spirit, and they too also, they receive the Holy Spirit in their life. Verse 9. And put difference between us and them, purifying their, heart, their hearts by faith. Kamukhaan lang natin sila, that they, walang pagkakab, walang pagkakab, there is no difference between them and us. The Bible says there is no more now Greek or Jew. Wala nang pagkakaima. Verse 10. Here. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? And this Paris is those are being rebuked by, the, by Peter said, How come you are telling this for the, the apostle to do this? To, for the people to be circumcised and for the people to, to know the law. Don't you know that even as we were not able to bear it, and even our forefathers... They're saying Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, even then they were not able to do this. Here, if we continue to study the book of Galatians, we will see the, 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 the law, what, that there are two things that we can see from the law, the negative side and the positive side, but it, it will be later on. And in verse 11, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So here, Peter is saying, na kung paano tayong naligtas, same thing with them. So ito po yung, this is the background here that are being, uh, that, will, that, are, uh, that will be, cor uh, be corrected to the churches of Galatia. So here, the believers in Galatia are being influenced by this pressure. Imagine this, they are being influenced by this pressure. Pero one thing po, sa atin po bilang mga mananampalataya, if you do not know the word of God, our pastor, the preachers are teaching you something here, and if you do not know the Bible, even you will be put to pressure. Why? Because you don't even understand what we are saying here. But if you, were, if you have an idea what we are preaching here, what we are teaching here, you can, you can follow through when we preach. And you can say if that is a wrong teaching or if that is a, a right teaching from the Word of God. So typo, it's important for us to know the Word of God. Amen. So that is the thing that we need to know. Okay. Here, that's why Paul writes to the Galatian, to the Galatian churches, which he pioneered to respond to the overcome or to, to the occurring problem on this particular issue. So this will issue this issue will be will be corrected by Apostle Paul. Paul is saying like this. Sabi niya, you are already justified. Paul saying to the Galatian, we are already justified. Those people who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, repented of their sin, and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in their life, they are already justified. What justification means? Siguro, yung iba, madaling word lang yan. No, if, we are, if you are going to study the word justification, it is a big thing. It is a big deal to us. Justification means we are, we are no, sa, sa Tagalog, uh, tayo yung inaring ganap. Ano ba yung kasi English? Uh, we were declared righteous. But, if you are going to study this, there is another thing that we can say for to complete the justification or the word justification in us, like this. When we are already justified by faith, we are no longer under the wrath 
of God. We are legally declared right before God. Amen. And we are no longer, we will no longer be, uh, we are tawag doon, wala na tayo sa ilalim ng sumpa. If you will read John chapter 3, verse 36, it says, there, it says there that those people who will not believe on the Lord, they are under the wrath of God. So now, because we are now justified, we are no longer under the wrath of God. Amen. Something that we need to rejoice. Amen. Amen. That even a drop of God's anger is no longer in us. Amen. So we can see the goodness of God here. In verse 11, Paul preached this already to them. In verse 11, in Galatians 1.11, sorry. He says here, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. So Paul already just he already preached this to the Galatians. Here. And by the way, if you want to look, uh, if you want to, you're looking to, uh, if you are looking for a more emphasized teaching on justification, you go to Galatia. You will see the, the teaching there in the book of Galatia. Okay. Here, we can see that the, 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 the churches of Gal in Galatia are, they abandon the, the, the doctrines speedily in, 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 a, in, a, in a fast way. It says that justification is speedily abandoned by the, the Galatian churches. Soon removed. Later on, I'm going to explain that, that word. Okay. So let me just give you a, go back to verse 1 first, and then I'll continue to my, uh, to my main topic in verse 6 to 10. In verse 1, it says here, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Okay, here we can see that uh, Paul uh, reaffirmed his apostolic authority. His calling is divine. He was called by God and not men nor man. Okay, nakita niyo, kung mabasa niyo po sabi niya, not men or man. Not by group or any of the apostles, or, or, although wala pong ganun, not even a single person who called me on this, in this ministry. But by Jesus Christ and God the Father. So we can see here, even us, we can see po dito that our calling is not just a calling of anyone. Hindi po ito calling, calling. This is something that we need to treasure in our life. Because one day we are going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. And He is the one who called us. And alam niyo po, ito po, ano lang to, I just want to just add, add from this. That, do you know that when we get raptured or when we die, when we face the Lord, I think no one will tell us that this is the Lord Jesus Christ. We will recognize Him. You know why? Because we have relationship with Him. He is our Father. He is our God. He is our Savior. Are you excited to see Jesus Christ? Are you excited for His coming? Kapatid, this is something that we need to rejoice in our life. In Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Romans 1, 1, it says here, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. He was called by God. So here we can see the divine calling of Apostle Paul. Let us jump up to verse 4. Okay, in verse 4, who gave himself for our sins, but that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. So here we can see Paul, the purpose, Christ's very purpose is to deliver us. Amen. In Titus 1, 2.14. Titus 2.14. 2.14. Okay, it says here, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify us unto himself a peculiar people, a zealous of good works. Amen. After knowing him, this is the thing that we need to do. Okay, so and this is uh, uh, verses that uh, Apostle Paul is, is calling is divine. Sana ba ako? Okay, this is one thing that they, uh, the Galatians, problem with the Galatians. The Galatians don't understand, don't understand this. No one can avoid sin by our effort or keeping the law. Okay, no one. In, uh, in Romans 3.20, Mr. Bilka, Romans 3.20, 
It says here, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So law was given to us for us to know what, the, what is wrong and what is right. And this was given to the Israelites. And, and he also given to the, to the people who, who don't have relationship with the Lord. Okay, that is the law. Christ gave himself already. But the problem with the Galatians, they don't, if I may say it, they don't really understand. Because if they understood this, they will not live their faith. Amen. Therefore, see here, therefore sin must be forgiven which Christ already accomplished. Okay? Through his death. In, in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Okay, basahin ko lang dito. Okay, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. He already been a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He became cursed for us because we are the one cursed. Why are we cursed? Because of sin. So now, because we are cursed of the sin, no one can pay our sin. So Christ, what Christ did, He gave Himself to the, to the cross of Calvary and He became the curse for us. Amen. So now we are free. Amen. So we have freedom. Let us use it for the glory of God. We may have weaknesses, but let us use our freedom to glorify God in our life. Amen. Amen. And in, in 1 Peter chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 24, Sister Milka, 1 Peter 2, 24. Okay. Who, who, uh, who his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. That's what Christ did to us. So now, if you are going to go to the famous word, in, one of the famous verse in Galatia, Galatia 2:20, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live; yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I, which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. We are no longer living. To be honest with you. Kung, kung tatanggapin lang po natin. Hindi na po tayo ang nabubuhay. Why? We don't own this life. We don't own the, our life. It is already bought with the price. It is already bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? So we should know that bi, bi, bilang pong man ng palataya. I'm not saying that you don't understand. It's just that let us give importance. Let us put yung pong, yung pong, yung pong joy natin on cry on what Christ did in our life. Amen? Okay, let us go now to verse 6 and 7. It says here, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Verse 7, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. That you will, they want you to turn from the gospel of Christ. So here we can see uh, the transition. Okay, you will see the transition of, of a false word or in his letter. Isipin mo from verse 1 to 5. From verse 1 to 5, ang ganda po ng ano niya, yung salutation niya sa, sa mga taga-Galatian. But in verse 6, look at the transition. In verse 6 said, I marvel. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace, into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Here, Paul confronts the Galatians right away for a very quick accept, acceptance of the error. You can see here, madali makikita po natin doon. Here we can see that Paul is a good leader. Amen. Why? Well, as, soon as, as soon as he have known that these people or these believers are in a wrong doctrine, he went there and corrected them. Or he wrote to them and corrected them. Sometimes we are being rebuked by our pastor. Sometimes we are being rebuked by our preachers, by our leaders. Pero nasasaktan tayo. Don't you know that love is there? Kasi, imagine this. If no one will correct you from your wrong, if no one, there is no word of God that will correct you, where are we now? So here we can see Paul is concerned being a good leader to, the, to these people, to the churches in Galatia. So here we can see that how, how Paul is concerned, 
his passion on how these people to be corrected in their mistakes. All about we commit, we commit mistakes, don't worry. Even us, we commit mistakes. But are we willing to be corrected by the Lord? Sometimes, alam niyo po, minsan, let me just say this, minsan ang ego mo ang taas eh. Ang ego natin, minsan, lampas pa sa ala pa up eh. Kaya minsan, pag lumagapak ka, lagapak ka rin talaga. Ang lakas ng bagsak. Why? Because we are not accepting the correction from God. The correction from the Word of God. Pastors and preachers are being used by God. Although we are not perfect, but we are used by God to share what is right from the Bible. So I open, I pray, makita po natin to, And it is something that we need to treasure in our life. Alam nyo, yun lang pong ligtas. Just imagine this, that being saved is already a blessing. And being corrected is just another thing that is being, that we are being blessed by the word of God. Okay, here, he says here, he was marveled that they quickly forgot the truth of the gospel. Uh, let me say this. When I say this, I'm not saying that you don't read the Bible. When I say this, I'm not saying you don't meditate the word of God. But here, he marveled that they quickly forgot the truth of the gospel. How well do we know the word of God? Isipin nyo yung mga preacher po, I'm not, hindi ko po itinataas mo. I'm not lifting up anyone here. It's just that I just want you, to, I just want to testify. If the preacher and even our pastor is already studying the word of God, and when there is a question from you, from the, from the congregation, sometimes we needed to study first. We cannot answer right away. Sometimes. And because, uh, we, need, because we don't want to give uh, an answer that is not absolute or is not, that is not really proven. See, even our pastor, when he, you know, uh, the false prophet, <laughs> he accepted that he is wrong, that the, you know, balaam. See? So for us, we need to know the word of God. Wag nyo sabihin, wag nyo pong, don't be, don't be hand-fed. Don't be hand-fed with the word of God. You study by yourself. I will give you, I will give you, uh, ngayon po, mayro, uh, now I am experimenting because I am, I am studying because uh, I heard from the, uh, from the YouTube that there is a pastor that he can, he can memorize the whole chapter, chapter by chapter. You know what is, uh, and, and his, uh, you know what is uh, his secret? He kept on reading, repeating, and repeating up the, up, at least 10 times. Then go to the another verse, 10 times, adding the verses, and then he was able to memorize the gospel. I'm not saying hindi lang po yung pagmemar. What I'm trying to say is this. We need to give effort. We need to give time in reading the word of God. Minsan nga po, mas madali tayong oras sa Facebook. Amen. Mm, yeah. Yun eh. Okay. So here Paul said, he marveled, nagtataka siya. Why he marveled? That, Why he so soon removed from the right doctrine, from the right teaching of the word of God? Even as if you don't know the word of God, madali kang, mal, madali kang maligaw, kapatid. You will be easily t- uh, turned from the truth if you don't know the word of God. So we need to give time in reading the word of God. If I am going to tell you how many times that I have read grace and I cannot tell you anymore. I'm not, hindi po ako nagyayabang. Kasi I just want to see. You remember, I will repeat this again. Remember what Pastor Jesse said? But when you, are, when you go to a place, the first time you are wandering, the second time you have remembered places, when you go the third time, the, the fourth time, the fifth, the tenth, almost, you, you almost know yung, yung place. At least in, in Simrip, you will tell me a place and I will go there because I know Simrip. Yung mga pre, yung iba ritong matatagal na, this is the same thing. Same thing with the Word of God. When you keep on repeating and repeating and repeating, reading the Word of God, you will be familiarized with the the verses and the chapters. Amen. So we need to give time. So here, the word here that soon removed is the meaning, uh, the another meaning is turning away. The word uh, soon removed, the other meaning is turning turning away. And turning away means in, in, if I know, in Greek or in Hebrew, the meaning of this is deserting. Deserting or desertion. And deserting or desertion is a military term. You know, that is the, what is the meaning of that in the military term? That you are abandoning your position and, and the military who are, who are abandoning their position, it is punishable by death. 
Do you know that? That when they abandon their position, and when the, once the, 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 the leader or the, the, the leader of that uh, company know that, you will be punished. And it is even punishable by that. At ito po yung bigat. This is the gravity what the Galatians did on that time. They were soon removed. They are deserting from the word of God. It seems that the gospel is foreign to them. Isipin niyo po ito. It seems that the gospel is foreign to them, putting themselves under the curse of the law. When they are already saved. Paul says, you are already saved. Alam po ni Paul yun. And here, uh, uh, sa atin po bilang mga manan pa, are we familiar with the word of God? So because here we can see that this, this Galatian putting themselves and again under the curse of the law. How familiar are we with the word of God? Alam mo minsan, the reason why sometimes we don't, we struggle, although we will, uh, we will uh, what do you call this, we are going to experience problems in our lives, struggles. But you know what, if you know the word of God, you go to the word of God and read it. Ako po, pag, some, uh, for me, when, uh, when there's some, there are some problems that I needed to, to, to resolve or that I needed to, uh, to be encouraged with, I go to Romans chapter 8. I go to Romans chapter 8. I read Romans chapter 8. I will read it loud. And you will see the promise of God. So for us, we should be familiar with the word of God. So how can you, how can, for example, when there's something that you need to do, how can you, how will you go to the Bible and solve that problem? But the truth is that the reason why we don't sometimes, we don't sometimes solve our problem because we are solving it, ano sabi ni Pastor Jesse, under the power of our strength, not under the power of the Holy Spirit, through the word of God. So we need to be familiar with the word of God. Curse of the law in, in, in Galatians chapter 5 verse 4. 5 verse 4 says here, Christ is, uh, Christ is become of no effect unto you whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from the grace. Kung kayo sinasabi nyo, naligtas kayo under the law, you are fallen from grace. Lumayo na kayo sa biyaya ng Diyos. You are now very far from the grace of God. But we as a Christian, we are already justified and we are no longer under the, the curse of the law. They accepted the gospel. Now, they are turning their backs for another gospel soon removed, which is not another. Diba sabi po din sa verse 7, which is not another, but there's some, that there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Meron lang gumagambala sa inyo. You know what? Like, uh, just let me say this. Magagambala lang po. We will be troubled. We will be we will be, uh, what do you call this? We will be troubled in our faith if you don't know what we are reading from the Bible. That's why they were troubled and they were perverted from the law, from the gospel of Christ. They turned from the, from the, the, the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here, how can we know that? I think we need to put ourselves under the power of the Holy Spirit and read the Bible. At mass at possible, let us memorize verses from the Bible. Amen. So here we can see that these people from knowing what the true gospel is, they turn their backs on the Lord. Are you going to, uh, parang ganda po yan. When we do sin in our life, we are not happy, we are so, what we call this, we are so desperate, we are so discouraged. I don't know if yun po ang pakiramdam mo bilang mga mananampalantaya. But here you can see that the Galatian churches, there is no even remorse. They thought they were fooled. That's why they were called foolish by Apostle Paul. Hindi po nila napansin, parang kung pag-aaral po nyo, parang hindi nila napansin that they were fooled from a wrong teaching. So here, they, need to be, they, need, they, they were needed to be rebuked by Apostle Paul and teach again the teaching from, the, from justification that they, they are already justified by faith. So here, even as, as a believer, if we are not familiar with the word of God and sometimes when we have problem, sometimes or even we commit sin and because we do not know the gospel, we do not know the word of God, what, where, where to go to, sometimes that problem will become bigger, big and big 
big and big into your life until you cannot overcome it because you don't have a resolution or you don't have solution from the word of God. Amen. That's why sometimes we are being rebuked. So as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, let us continue to, to be encouraged and to study the word of God in our life. I hope I can finish this. Amen. So here, pamilya, hindi lang po yung papapamilyar sa word of God that we need to study the word of God. For me right now, I, to be honest with you, although I am reading from another books from the Bible, I am co always concentrating in the book of Galatia. For now, this is what I'm studying. So if you are going to, so if you are going to, uh, if you want to, uh, to really familiarize with the word of God, you go to a certain chapter, you go to a certain uh, passage. Be familiar with that. Pag nalaman mo na yan, you can go to another passage, go to another chapter, go to another topic from the Bible until you familiarize many things from the Bible. At least pag nag-preach yung preacher dito, you will not be wondering. Oh, I marvel. Ano ba yung sinasabi ni, ano, ni Pastor? I am marveling. Why, what is that? Where is that from the Old Testament? Where is that word lentils from the Old Testament? Alam mo that there is a word lentils from the Word of God in the Old Testament? that are being guarded by the men of David? Minsan, ha? Ano ba yun? You are marveling, you are wondering. Pero kung binamasa po natin ng Word of God, at least nakakabasa po tayo everyday, at least we read the Word of God everyday, hindi man everyday, at least we need to give time in reading the Word of God. And we will not be marveling when we read or when we hear the Word of God. The word of God. Amen. Okay, here, we see that in verse 6 and 7, there is no, Paul says, there is no another gospel. There is no another gospel for you to believe. There is only one gospel, and that is the gospel that we, that we preach, that what Paul says. Okay, in verse 8, Paul twice declared the word curse. Okay, Paul twice declared the word curse for those who will preach another gospel. Paul means business when it comes to the word of God. Amen. We can see how Paul seriously obeying the word of God. Although we, we have read his story, his life in the Bible, it, look, it looks like parang wala siyang mali. No, nagkakamali din po siya. Just to be, just to be uh, uh, honest, nagkakamali din po siya. But if you are going to look at him, magkatatawa. Sabi ko, hanes kayo talaga mga dinil. <laughs> Maging hanes naman kayo. Okay. <laughs> okay, see here. Ganito talaga ka pampanga. Okay, here. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> okay, Paul mean business when he, when it comes in word in the word of God. So in verse 8, 1 verse 8, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. If you will go back from the top, Paul says, but though we, we, sabi ni Paul, kami man, imagine that even Paul including himself, saying that if we are the one, even whoever it is, sa mga apostol, among the apostles, even though they preach to you the gospel, the right gospel, and they come back to you and they are re recurring or they are perverting you to, to believe in another gospel, Paul says, let him be accursed. Paul, that's what Paul says. Kapatid, there are people in the Philippines teaching the wrong doctrine. Are you happy with that? Teaching the, the, the first fruit with the wrong interpretation, even the tithes. Now if you will teach the right tithing in, in, to them, they will not even believe it. Why? Because of money. They will not believe that. And saying that the word of God, the word church in the Bible is wrong. It, is, it should be Ecclesia. Ecclesia is not English. So here, if you are going to be, if you will not be aware of that, kapatid, madali po tayo matangay. Why these people are being, uh, being carried away by these people? Because these people are uh, famous people saying, oh, we have millions but when it comes to salvation, there is no millions. When knowing the word of God. In Matthew 16, 26, even though you have already the whole treasure of earth and lose your own soul, what will happen to you? You will profit nothing. That is what the Bible is saying. So here, 
Paul is, is, is really serious when it comes to the word of God. Okay, here, God's message to the sinner is that salvation is by grace through faith, not plus the law. So here we can see what uh, uh, this Galatian believed. That's why Paul says, even me, even me, Paul says, if I will teach you another gospel, you curse me. That's what Paul says. In verse 9, and we said before, so I say now again, I am saying it again to you, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received. If you are going to hear people accept to, those, uh, uh, God, to the gospel that I already preached to you, he says, let him be a curse. See? See the, the way, the gravity of doing this to the word of God? In, 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 uh, in, um, in, in teaching the wrong teaching? and making wrong interpretation from the Bible. Akala lang po natin yun, hindi. Yes, we are no longer under the curse. But if you are going to do that, God says, it is not good for us to do that. Paul says, let him be a curse. Okay, here, in Acts 15.1, a certain man which came down from Judea, ito po yung binasa ko sa inyo kanina, that taught brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, he cannot be saved. So here, this is the thing that uh, Paul is uh, saying that those people that will teach the wrong teaching, let them be accursed. If anyone preach another gospel plus the law, not even, even that preacher is a, an angel, or we, let him be accursed. And Paul also mentioned angels, right? Imagine then, Kung sabi ni Paul, if an angel will stand before us and will teach another gospel, let him be a curse. Paul saying, what Paul is saying is this, I don't care whoever he is. If he is teaching the wrong, teaching the wrong doctrine, I don't care, let him be a curse. That's what Paul is saying. That's how Paul is seriously taking the word of God. In his life. So for us, same thing with us. We need to be serious with this. I don't care. Paul says, I don't care who's that. That's what Paul is saying. No matter who they are, Paul is not, is not bothered with that. Paul is always serious when what he is, he is teaching. When he teaches the word of God, he teaches the pure word of God. He knows the word of God is purified seven times in heaven. Do we know that? Have we, have, have we read that in the Bible? How pure the Word of God is? The Word of God says, the Word of God is purified seven times. Means perfect. Perfectly purified in heaven. That is the Word that we are believing now. So if you are going to turn this in a wrong way, let him be accursed. That's what Paul says. Okay, the law has curse for those who will not follow. Okay. If you are going to go back in, in uh, what do you call this in the Old Testament, if they will not follow the, the, the law, they will, be, they will be cursed. But here, the gospel has cursed for those who will, not, who will change it. You remember the, the word from Revelation 22 18? Can you go there, Sir Milka? Okay, 22 18. Eighteen, okay. For I testify unto everyone that heareth the word of the of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So here, hindi natin pwedeng palitan o tagdagad ng word of God. And some people and some preachers they are adding to it. If you are going to look at this before. The, before I continue, before in that, in that time, uh, the, 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 the Judaizer are teaching that before you become a Christian, you should be circumcised. Which is, ngayon wala na yon. Wala na ngayon, di ba? In, in, in our time, no one will tell you that you need to be circumcised to be saved. Wala na yon. Baka batukan ka ba nun pag sinabi mo yon. But, the spirit of that is still here now. Even, even today. The spirit of that. That before you get saved, you need to do this. You don't need to repent. 
for you to, receive, to, be, to be saved. That's another gospel. Amen. That's another gospel. Who said that we should not repent? Okay, I will agree that you, you don't need to repent if you did not sin. That's what I believe. If you did not sin, okay, don't repent because there's nothing to repent of. But the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we needed to receive, we needed to repent, we need to change our mind as Paul did in the road to Damascus when he met the Lord. Amen. So who said that we don't need to repent? Who are you not to repent before the Lord? Do you remember when, when, when Isaiah saw the goodness of God, saw the Lord? He said to himself, For, uh, uh, for I am a man with an und- uh, for I am undone. I am undone when he saw the Lord. He saw his, his filthiness. He saw his, his iniquities. He saw his life before the Lord that time. Even us, when we see the God, we will there is no way that you will not repent. Maybe those people did not yet receive or did not met the Lord yet. That's why they are not repenting. There's no way that you will not repent when you meet the Lord in your life. And there's no way then these people are changing the gospel. They are changing the gospel. Okay, verse 10. Last na po ito. At least maabot ng 10. Okay, verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. This is the proper motivation. To please God and not men. Amen. But a lot of people, they want to be pleased by men even though they are not being pleased by God. I would rather be clapped by one God who created me than millions who, will, who did not. They are applauding you because, oh, you are a good man. You are, uh, you are like this. You are like that. You are famous. When God is saying, hmm, you want to hear that from God? Well, yeah, it's true. It's true. People are so, people are so, uh, what do you call this? People are so addict when it comes to being praised by men. When God is putting them down, they're saying, you are nothing. Without me, you are nothing. So this is the proper motivation in our world, that we should be glorifying God in our lives. Paul is being accused that he used flattery words to please his listeners. But he said, no. I am pleasing God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. 1 Thessalonians 2, 4. Okay. But, as we, uh, but as we were allowed of God to be put in, in, in the trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God, we try at our hearts. Here, we can see that God is not interested on what you are saying, what you are doing. He always look at our hearts. And God knows that. God knows that. Alam po lang Panginoon yung puso natin. Alam niyo yung mga ano nasa iniisip natin ngayon. And, and he, he is interested on that. That's why when he said, you are, uh, you are worshiping me, you are, you are worshiping me with your lips. But your heart is so far from me. God wants, God wants us to please him, to worship him with all of our hearts, with all of our strength, with all of our soul. Amen. So, malapit na po kung matapos. Don't worry. So, in our life, who do we please? Are we interested in being pleased by men? Di ba kasi, minsan, ano yun, temptation kasi din kasi yun eh. Pag sinabi mo, medyo magaling ka, oh wow, and there are a lot of people are, are uh, uh, what do you call it, they are applauding, they are inano ka nila, they accept ka nila, oh, you are so good, you are so good. And then, you are being lifted up, and then your ego is going there and there, going up and up, up, up and away, until when you fall down, it's down too far. When you, do, when you fall, laki ng lagapak, sabi nga sa inyo kanina. Kasi nga, sometimes, we need to be, uh, hindi ko po sina- I'm not saying that we are already perfect, which is my uh, signature word. We are not perfect. But we need to glorify God in our life. Who do we please? Sino bang pini-please natin sa buhay natin? When we go to this church, whom do we please? Why we go to this church? Why are you in this church? Why are we here? Are we because I need to have uh, palipas oras? I need to uh, I need my job. 
I need friends. I need candies or whatever it is. No, we are here to glorify the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, so three verses and then we are done. First Corinthians ten thirty one. Okay, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. In whatsoever we do, we need to glorify God. Amen. Amen. We should be aware of that. Sasabing ko sa muli, although we commit mistake, but we need to be aware on what we are doing. We need to be aware, hindi lang maging conscious tayo sa mga tao, but we need to be conscious on what God wants us to do. So in that case, in whatever we do, we will do, all do it for the glory of God. Colossians 3.17 Okay. And whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. In word and in deeds. Sa salita at sa gawa. Okay? It's a good thing that we, we talk about the Word of God, but it's another thing for us to walk in the Word of God. Amen. So we should be conscious about the last verse, First Peter 4.11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the, as, uh, of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praised and dominion and forever and ever. Amen. So in everything that we do, we do all for the Lord. Amen. So I hope and I pray, Kapati, this will be a challenge for us. And it will be also a challenge for us to study the Word of God. Amen. So here we can see that Paul rebuked the Galatians because of his fashion. And also he's frustrated because of what they did. But Kapati, the, the things that we, we need to learn from here is in verse 10. Whom do we place in our life? In verse 10, I will read it again. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I speak to please men? Or if yet please men, I should not be the servant of God. If I only please men, I will is that I am not worthy to please God, to serve God. Paul, that was Paul saying, to be the servant of God. But for us, we need to have a proper motivation. And that is to glorify God. In our, it's something like this. When you are in a way, there are a lot of things that we can see on the side. But if we are focused in uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, looking unto Jesus alone, sometimes we are being sidetracked. And when we get sidetracked, then, nagsisimula po yung kapalpakan natin. Amen. So we need to focus our eyes on the Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Let's all stand up and pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you.